serious, people who have witnessed a murder. What happened? Was just after the actual murder but I feel like suicide still counts. Dart was out on the street by my home when an old man ran out onto the street and shot himself. Apparently he had just killed his caretaker as well. This kind of reminds me of what happened to my friend. I was in the hospital and he walked over to see me but on the way an old man walked in front of a train and killed himself. I've known him for 15 years and I've never seen him so shaken up. I was about 10 years old. I was in the backseat of my mom's car waiting for my brother to get out of high school when out of nowhere I hear three loud bangs that sounded like firecrackers. Then comes a guy running down the street across from us, covered in blood and holding his stomach. He lies down on the grass and stops moving. This was back in 2006 and I had to take some classes that helped kids with overcoming traumatic experiences. Didn't work. I still think about it to this day. Chinatown shooting in Toronto last February was just got home from the bar and looked out the window after the shooting started to confirm it was gunshots to see the final shots and everyone run. Went downstairs and out to the street to help with first aid but both guys I examined were dead. Turned out to have been a drunk guy overreacting to a personal debt one of the victims had to him, or something like that. Hit and run across the family factory in the middle of the night. Her hair got caught in the wheel and the car dragged her by the head for a good few meters. Christ. My father, who is an intercity high school auto shop teacher, was talking to a student through a chain link fence when suddenly the student was gunned down with an automatic weapon. He was within 5 feet of the victim when a few gang members approached and shot him in the legs, later firing the rest of the clip into his chest and head. They fled the scene immediately and didn't attempt to harm my father, however due to the proximity he was covered in blood splatter and body tissue. He describes it as the most horrific experience of his entire life. We live lived in Los Angeles. This happened before I was born so he told me over 15 years after the incident. It happened in 1992. Although shocked for a few weeks he is fine now. I think this event inspired him to work harder to help kids in these communities. He had worked in several schools in similar areas. Jesus freaking Christ. I expected something awful in this thread. But wow. I hope your dad finds peace and can one day forget about that horrible experience. I don't know if I could ever sleep again after something like that. <laughs> Happened a few years ago just outside our house. A man was walking on the street when a guy on motorcycle came in and just shot him multiple times with a rifle and drove off. He was still barely alive begging for help but eventually died. Saw a murder from my kitchen window. I live in Lithuania and there are loads of those 9 floor boxes of flats that were built in the Soviet times. I live on the 3rd floor. In Lithuania there is a big problem with young people. Teens turning bad and stuff. Glad I didn't get involved with these people. So I saw 17 18 year old guy walk out of the flat and meet a 16 year old guy that I knew. Basically they got into an argument and it spiraled into a fight. Seeing that he was losing the younger guy pulled out a knife. Stabbed the older one in the arm. In the side and the last one in the neck. Then he ran away. The older guy died 2-3 hours later in the hospital. The murderer gave himself up the next day was making breakfast one beautiful Saturday morning. I hear two or three pops outside. I go over to the window to the balcony and see a guy unload the clip on another guy that was still strapped in his car in the entry to the parking lot. The guy was clearly already dead from the first couple shots to the head. The car, still in drive, rolls across the parking lot and hits a curb which brings it to a stop. Shooter just stands around waiting for the cops to pull up. When they do, he quite calmly puts his gun down on the ground beside him and puts his hands up in the air. Improbably late, but back in 1996 I was in Russia, watching a guy bash a girl's head with a rock, until her skull exploded. I was a kid, around 12 years old, hanging around the small thug group. The guy was a small time thug a bit older than me. Everyone was though. Her skull exploded and her brains and blood splattered across the asphalt. Others were standing in the circle, about 12 people, watching how it would end. I was watching with sort of morbid curiosity, cause I have never seen inside of a human before. Death was commonplace in Russia back then, so no one was really moved by it. She was killed because she was the girlfriend of a guy, then cheated on him, 
and gave him HIV. In the end, he died like in a couple of months in some gunfight, I think. No one called the police as well then, for some weird reason. Russia terrifies me. I didn't witness the murder, but I did lead to the discovery of the body and the arrest of the culprit. When I was working retail in a crappy little video game shop one day, I had a guy who was obviously tweaked off his good come in to sell us a lot of stuff. The problem is, I recognize a lot of it as stuff that I had personally sold our best customer. I paged my boss discreetly and had them go check on him, while taking as much time as humanly possible to drag out the transaction with Tweaky McGee until the police came to arrest him at the store. He had gone over to our regular's place, knocked back a couple of beers, and then stabbed him 70 plus times so that he could steal his crap. The victim had survived getting blown up in Iraq only to get stabbed to death by someone he thought of as a friend over a bunch of material crap. This is one of the biggest reasons that I think people can be disgusting wastes of flesh. I'm not sure if this is right, because maybe it wasn't exactly a murder, well someone was killed anyway. When I was 14-15 years old I went shopping with my friend. I live in the safest city, nothing really ever happens here. We are just looking clothes to buy and I look up to the marketplace. Notice something is going on. This old woman is walking towards a middle aged man with a gun. I'm thinking no way this is happening. He must be a cop or something. Who the heck would just pull out a gun here? I couldn't hear what the woman said, but later I was told she said, put the gun away. There are children here. He shot her. I watched her drop to the ground, but it didn't feel real. It was like watching a movie. He shot two more people after that, but I didn't see it because everything went crazy. People started running. I pulled my friend away from the windows and some woman started screaming. Lock the doors. I probably always remember this man yelling back. We have to let people in. They need to get to the safety. She was only thinking about herself. He was thinking about other people. It was an interesting comparison. Murder suicide. Parents had to meet at a public place to exchange the kids. I was across the street so I didn't actually see the shooting. Thank god. But I heard some gunshots and was like, um crap so I went to my work truck and while I was calling the police a car from across the street idled across the four lane road, jumped the curb and crashed into a bunch of cars in a parking lot. At that point I got the heck out of there, come to find out via news and knowing some state troopers that the dad pulled up, told his kids to get in the car, he then shot the mom in the head, she died immediately and is why the car idled across the street. He then looked at his kids and said I told you to get in the car then shot himself. Those poor kids. Frick that's rough. My father told my mother he'd kill her if she ever left him. She trapped him into marriage. He became very abusive. She divorced him and started dating. Mom with her new BF. My sister and I were visiting GMA and GPA sitting in the LR when my dad removed his shoes to walk across the front porch and barge in the front door. Everyone scattered. GMA. Mom and sister ran upstairs while I ran to the kitchen. Dad was waving a gun so mom's BF went to his truck to get his gun. GPA blocked the staircase so dad couldn't get to my mom. Dad cocked the gun to GPA head when BF returned just in time and shot dad in the head. Mom ended up marrying BF and he is a great dad. He adopted my sister and I and they had my brother. A lot of dysfunction in our family, but have no doubt my sister and I would be very different people now if dad was in our lives. Not sure if I'm too late but my grandma was on the freeway and some dude was driving slow in the fast lane so the car behind him kept honking at him. Eventually the dude who was driving slow stopped his car, got out with a gun and shot the guy honking at him. That's why my grandma to this day never honks her horn at someone. Thank you for the anti-road rage reminder. I needed that. I was in Greece when they hosted the Olympics years ago. One night, my cousins took me and my brother to the bars clubs in Tripoli, where we got relatively smashed. We stepped outside and saw a commotion in the street. Looked like a small scuffle between several guys. One guy runs away, and another kid, maybe 18-ish kinda crumples to the ground. A lot of blood starts pooling around the kid. I remember this very vividly, since the kid was dressed very nicely, think Jersey Shore, and was wearing a white shirt. A few of his friends kinda stand there in shock, 
and I think one of them kinda held him. I remember no one chasing the guy who ran, and no one freaked out as much as I expected. I also remember wanting to go over and help the guy. I had just taken a first aid CPR class, and thought I could help, cause no one was actively helping or putting pressure on the wound. My brother and cousin kinda grabbed me and ushered me away, telling me I shouldn't get involved. They were very likely correct that it wasn't a good idea and that I probably couldn't help. We were staying at a hotel just around the corner, maybe one two blocks away, and just went back to our room. The next morning we heard that the kid had died, and that the murderer has been caught. It turns out that the victim was an Albanian kid who was out with his friends, got drunk, and talked some crap to some Greeks when watching the Olympics at a bar. One of those Greeks, presumably also drunk, escalated the situation until it spilled onto the street and turned into a stabbing. Never been less proud to be a Greek. I was a valet at a nightclub. A guy walks out, arguing with another guy who came out shortly after him. I'm not sure what's going on, but the first guy hands me his coupon and I run off to get his car. As I'm rounding a corner, my headlights illuminating the two, and now a third person between them. I see the first guy pull out a gun and attempt to shoot the guy who followed him out but the third guy gets in the way and gets shot. Two times, the shooter runs toward me, the guy driving his car, but I drove off, more scared than trying to prevent his escape. I park the car not far away, take the keys and run back to the club. People are panicking and I quickly run off as well. I don't know and don't care how anyone got their cars back after that and I never returned to that club. It soon closed and became a restaurant. The victim was apparently a random dude who was just walking by and tried to stop a fight. He lived nearby and it was the Saturday night before Mother's Day. Reading about it the next morning broke my heart. I was living in Ungarsk, Russia about 3 years ago when one night, outside my apartment two guys were arguing really loudly at like 2am. All of a sudden, I heard 4 gunshots, each one about 2 seconds after the previous. For the next hour or so, I heard a chopping whacking noise. I lived in an apartment building of 250 plus apartments next to another building of 600 plus apartments but no one called the police so it just kind of was swept under the rug. These Russia stories are terrifying. I'm not visiting you guys. Friends and I were walking back to our cars after attending a dinner at another friend's house. Everyone was military. Couple dudes on the corner. No big deal. We live in a sketchy area. Beat a car pulls a drive by and mows these dudes down. Everyone dashes for cover. Three of us shoot at the car since a good amount of the rounds hit pretty close to us. We run over to the guys on the corner. One was gone. The other wasn't gonna make it. CPR didn't help and we basically stuck around till the police and medical arrived. Ruined one of my favorite shirts. TFW you guys to do a drive by and there's a bunch of military dudes with concealed weapons right there. Oops. Was staying at a crappy motel in probably the worst part of Nashville 6 or so years ago. Heard a bunch of screaming outside so obviously I looked. Across the parking lot a guy was holding a gun to another guy's head. Dude with the gun was a druggy, M or H or something. He was real thin and had sores all over him, and that was kinda what you saw there. Anyway, a bunch of yelling I could not understand through motel glass and junkie pulled the trigger. I just kinda froze and stared. It is not as much blood as TV and games make you think it would be. Spent a dazed couple hours talking to cops, or it felt like it anyway. Some point I went to sleep. Then woke up and went to work cause if I missed a day I could not buy another week at the motel and would be homeless again. Not as spectacular as pop culture depicts it, but it really sticks with you. Would not recommend. When I was 12 I witnessed an accidental murder. This old lady was driving too fast in a residential area and slammed a dude on a motorcycle. That dude was my older brother's friend. I saw the crash from afar like 50 meters away, then rushed there with my friend. The dude was squirming like a goldfish out of water for a moment, and then just, stop moving. The old lady was petrified behind her wheel, she didn't even come out of her car. My brother told me later the dude died of internal bleeding, no idea what happens to the lady though. Years ago, I had friends over to play D&D and cops gunned down a burglar in my parking lot. He had a gun and had climbed into a balcony, why, then turned to fire on police. 
We checked it out, got interviewed by the news, and my friend went on a few dates with the reporter. Today I watched the Philando Castile dashcam video, that was more disturbing than seeing the body of a real criminal. To see a cop on video panic and just start shooting into a peaceful car? Jesus freaking Christ. Serious. I refuse to watch that video, crap like that makes me so irrationally angry. I didn't see the murder, but I did hear it. I was sitting in my apartment with my roommate when I heard a series of very loud bangs in the street just outside. It took a second to realize it was gunfire literally right outside the apartment. It was slow and methodical. Two shots each second or so from what I assume was a rifle. At this point I look to my roommate and say should we be ducking under the table or something? The interesting part was you could actually hear the victim returning fire. It was some sort of gang related killing. Partially drowned out by the much louder rifle fire you could hear sporadic popping gunshots from what I assume was a pistol. It was much quieter than the rifle. After maybe 5 seconds of this the quieter gunshot stopped and it was just shot after shot. Slow and constant. And then just silence. A couple of minutes later the whole place was swarming with police. And everyone had come out of their houses to see WTF had just happened. It was some sort of gang related murder. I don't know much more than that. I saw a few shootings when I lived around Guatemala City. I'm not sure exactly which ones were fatalities except for one. I was standing in a city bus looking out the window at the passengers boarding when I saw a hand press a gun into a guy's temple just a few feet from me and shoot him. Everyone scattered and the bus took off. I looked through the back of the bus at the now empty street and saw his body laying in the gutter gushing blood down the street. When I was kid, I witnessed a gang murder execution style, was dribbling my soccer ball from the local park and I saw a pitch black car pull into a driveway two houses down from where I was and a guy in a ski mask got out, soon to be dead guy answers the door, and guy in ski mask hits him in the stomach, or balls, couldn't see due to a chain link fence partially blocking my view, with the guy stumbling from getting him, the other guy pulls out his gun and instantly shoots guy in the head and dips. Everything took about 10 seconds but it felt like hours. My mom had us move out that same night. I had forgotten about this until Breaking Bad came out and there was a particular death scene that reminded me of what I saw. Which was like WTF. Was on a bus years ago with my nana. The bus comes to a sudden stop and a woman is screaming in the middle of the road. Someone had disemboweled her husband and left him to die in the middle of the road. I know this isn't what I witnessed but it shook me up just the same. My mother witnessed a 5-6 year old girl get hit by a drunk driver right outside of her home. The girl was dead instantly. It was the niece of her neighbor. I came over as soon as I could to comfort her. She was shook up really bad. She said the screaming was what haunts her the most. There are flowers and a cross added to the property line between her house and her neighbor's house that she sees every day. It still makes her really upset but understandably so. People who drive drunk to the peril of others make me so freaking angry. Was at a dive bar in my town. Happened about 8 years ago or so. Anyway, a buddy of mine and I were hanging out near the door. Bar extended to near door. I was standing closest to the door. All of a sudden I hear a loud ringing. I thought a fire alarm went off. I'm standing looking around trying to understand what's going on. I look around and see everyone, including my friend, crouching. I do the same and as I do, I look to my left and see a guy laying on the floor about 5 feet away, his girlfriend screaming wake up junior. Turns out, I was so close to the gun behind my head, I didn't even hear the gunshots, just my ears ringing from how close it was, definitely desensitized me to death. When I was 4, someone called the police for a domestic dispute coming from our address, no dispute going on. All I remember is watching the police pull up to our house, come inside and shoot my father. No one's ever given me the details of what really happened that day, but I've grown up dealing with PTSD, a less intense form of it, usually showing up with my depressive episodes and OCD. Seeing something like that as a child never really goes away. Played in a popular local band in the 70s. We were on break after our first set in a shady club. That even my dad warned me about. Our first break protocol was getting high and our second was french fries. So we went to a very small adjoining restaurant. About 6 tables. 
Halfway through them someone entered and shot the only other client in the place. The gun was about one foot away from my ear, so it was a surprise, to say the least. My immediate reaction was to get to our dressing room, so I bolted in that direction. I was about 5 feet behind the exiting gunman and my bandmates thought I was going after him to take him down. Um, no, I'm not a hero. I'm glad he didn't turn around and think the same thing. Spent the rest of the night in the cop shop and the rookie cop who drove us home let us smoke a joint in the patrol car. Two firsts in one night. Not sure if it was a murder or not but it definitely was an attempt. I was waiting for a bus one when I heard the screech of the car's tires. I looked up to see that a car had ran into a motorbike. The driver of a car then got out of his car, got on the bike he hit and rode it into a nearby alleyway. The injured rider then got up and ran into the alleyway yelling crap like I'm gonna kill you you son of a bee he had something in his hand but I couldn't see what. He ran down the alleyway which I knew, for a fact, was a dead end. About 5 minutes later, I saw the rider come out and frantically run away. He had blood on him. Couple minutes later an ambulance and police car arrived. That's all I saw before my bus arrived. When my family lived in a pretty rough part of town, my mom witnessed a car shooting, most likely over dope. A guy walked up to a car that was parked directly underneath our house, pulled out a gun, and shot the guy three, four times before walking away. My mom was breastfeeding my baby brother at the time when this happened just outside our window, and she freaked the frick out. She was too scared to call the police because she was afraid of the guy tracing it back to her and negatively implicating her family. In the end, we convinced her to call the cops. When the cops came to collect eyewitness testimony, they refused to take off their shoes when they entered our house. I think it was part of the protocol of doing a house visit or something. I don't know. My mom cooperated, but her Asian butt got pretty pee at the police officers for dirtying her floor. We don't know if they caught the guy. Okay, I live in a small, drug infested town, Logtown, VA. It's about equal distance between NY and Miami, drug haven. About two years ago, I was pretty heavy into selling drugs. I was at my plug's house when I heard cum type commotion going on in the backyard. It's a very remote part of VA and his property was surrounded by nothing but open spaces and trees. I distinctly remember hearing please dog. I lll get him the money. I fricked up. Please I asked my homie what was going on. He said dude trap him but still owes me 5 grand apparently the man was still selling drugs. He bought from someone else. While he still owed my homie 5 grand. I started to walk out back to see who it was. As I stepped at back I saw the man standing over the guy look at my homie and my homie gave him a nod and bam. The loudest, most frightening moment in my life just occurred. The gun was only about one foot from the guy's head when the trigger was pulled. The side and the guy's head was caved in. Brain matter on the concrete blood everywhere. My homie looked at me and said you better be glad we always be boys. This happened in an area of Los Angeles called Silver Lake around 2002, early evening. I'm coming home on my motorcycle. I stop and park the bike in the driveway to open the garage. As I'm walking the bike in, two Latino gangbangers walk past me and flash a hand sign that looked sorta like bang bang. You're dead. They are wearing bandanas to cover their faces and anyone who has lived in LA for as long as I have, knows. This is not good. I keep walking my bike in but almost immediately there is gunfire. Like 6 or 7 shots in the space of a few seconds right outside my door. This crap is loud. I hear bullets impacting metal and some yelling in Spanish. I hit the ground. Take up a position behind some boxes and wait for whatever the heck is about to happen next. I hear running then the sound of a car peeling out and driving away fast. I wait a few beats and creep over to the opening of the garage. Nobody there. All quiet. I go outside and right there in the middle of the street is a guy down on the ground. Another gangbanger. White shirt. Dark blue pants tattooed all to heck and back. He has multiple gunshot wounds but he is alive and writhing in pain. Blood shows up really well against a white shirt and he is bleeding from like 3 different places. I run inside to get my cell and call 9. 1. 1. Come back out and go up to him. I say hey man. Just stay still. It's alright. Help is on the way. 
He says the 7 Fryoknig shot me. He seemed kind of relaxed just laying there breathing and it was striking how calm he was about it. I would have been freaking the fck out if I just got shot. He told me it was because he was selling on their street. Then he asked me take his drugs so the cops won't find it on him and charge him for it. I had to resist the impulse to say well you're probably going to die in a few minutes so don't worry about it. I didn't say that. Anyway, he is laying there and he reaches into his pants and hands me a little bag of white powder. I'm like what the fck and I throw the little bag into the bushes. He sees me toss the bag and says hey man, don't waste it I swear to god. I'm all dude. I don't want that sht. He's pee now. So I back off and head inside. I'm done. Later I see some of the other locals come out and he must have told someone to retrieve the bag because one person started looking around for it. Lights and sirens finally show up and he gets carried away. End of story. I'll never forget that though. All he cared about was that stupid little bag of drugs. Unreal. I didn't actually get to witness it. It happened just around the corner when my uncle had us all five kids around. So as soon as the gun was fired, he ran the other way and everyone did the same but me. I wanted to see because I was an 8 year old shithead and didn't consider what might happen. Two motorcycles shot out of the corner of the street and then went in opposite directions. One with one person, another one with two, everyone wearing full face helmets. I saw that basically nothing was moving. Everyone had gone inside their houses and businesses were still technically open, but there was nobody on site. People hidden behind the serving windows or in the kitchen of restaurants. I know this one because a friend's family was in one of the restaurants and as soon as they heard the shot they were all ushered into the kitchen. It wasn't even a troubled town or anything, just your regular beach town with regular people living in it. Not even a drug problem in the area. It was unreal. The guy, sitting on the driver's seat of his car shot execution style in the forehead from the window right by his side he even looked peaceful just a random little hole in the middle of his forehead and red flowing behind him on the seat on his shoulders on his clothes but his face looked just as if he was taking a nap after a delicious meal content and with a faint smile it was really disturbing he was not moving nor breathing and a few moments later my uncle just rushed to where i was snatched me away and took me to a house around the corner where my sister and cousins were hiding the house of a family friend where we stayed for a while until the police came followed by being brought to my grandmother's home where my parents were and i was talked to about the risks of how i could have been killed and got spanked for being so disregarding of my own safety the murder never got resolved they didn't catch the perpetrators and the guy seemed clean real freak case it seems to me that you were frozen in fear, not being a little crap and ignoring the danger. I don't think the spanking is necessary seeing how the trauma of witnessing a murder was probably punishment enough. I could be wrong though. That's just the impression I got. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. Bye for now.